Welcome to Hive Mind. This is Edge with my co-host speaker. How are you feeling today, speaker? I'm good. I'm waking up. I'm ready to talk about this topic. Uh, it's one of the things that have always interested me. So I'm ready to go. Yeah, this is definitely a topic that's kind of in your area of interest. So yeah, it should be a good talk. I'm doing pretty good. Just uh, another day watching the clown show, but it looks like the clown show is just getting even darker and more depraved if that's even possible, when you add the metaverse into it. It's just brought another dimension, a new dimension to the most sick, perverted, demented parts of social media. Mm -hmm. um, something like this was always coming. Uh, so today's talk, we're going to talk about, uh, well, Facebook's metaverse, uh, VR chat, and virtual reality as a platform, which is always coming down the line. Uh, we always knew something like this would happen. Uh, me, personally, I've always been fascinated in this technology. Uh, but then again, I'm a conscious adult that can see the benefits and uh, the the bad side of, sides of it and where this could go and, you know, the, the dystopian path that this could take as well. Um, so the, these companies that are launching things like the metaverse vr chat uh these are concepts of an old idea uh if you were to look at pioneers in the field you would look at a game called second life which i have played which is actually a lot more polished than the metaverse <laughs> which is interesting that they're trying to push the metaverse which i think is going to fail in the ass but uh, vr chat is is something that seems to be taking off a little bit faster uh, there is a lot of people playing it, kids and adults alike, and that is something that we're going to dive into a bit, is how do these programs start affecting our children? That's yeah, be definitely. Because, and I think we'll talk about this more in depth towards the end of the chat, but um, because they realize really that Facebook um, is dying off. And it's really just the older crowd that's still using it. And all the kids are migrating over to say TikTok. And so this is kind of a way of capturing more of the youth and bringing them up into this whole virtual reality sort of existence mm -hmm. and accepting it as a normality rather than something like new and novel. And, you know, I understand, I think they understand that that takes several years and are willing to go through all of the bumps along the way as far as um, how many people are actually willing to do this, how much money they're going to lose. I think they're willing to take those losses um, for the long-term game, don't you think? Yeah. Um, the idea of a full metaverse, I, Facebook kind of stole the term there, which is kind of what I I dislike about it too, because it is a term used for all of these things combined. VR chat is not the metaverse. Second life is not the metaverse, but they are a form of um, singular metaverses. Uh, okay, so yeah, let's kind of, kind of explain. So it, Facebook changed their name to Meta. Facebook owns Oculus, um, the Oculus uh, equipment. Rift. Yep. So, like Oculus Quest 2 is the latest version. That is the equipment, the VR equipment. And then you can download various different kinds of apps, just like apps you can download on your Xbox or on your phone or whatever that are games. Some of these games are single player. Many of these games are multiplayer. And a lot of these games are games where they're sort of like social media, where you, they're just chat rooms and you meet up with different people and chat. And so we're going to kind of focus on these chat rooms in VR, particularly VR chat. There are others, but VR chat seems to be the most popular, does it not? Yep. Um, and, and this is, uh, so we're going to go into the more dystopian aspect of it and how it can get worse. Uh, in my take, you know, things like this can be beneficial in heaps of ways. Um, business meetings, board meetings, uh, 
it, 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 it does have an aspect to bring people closer together if you are a conscious adult. There's things that you can do in that world. Uh, there's things that you can do in 3D virtual worlds, which is absolutely amazing and astonishing. And then you have the cesspool of all new technology, um, just like yeah. the back end of Twitter, just like the uh, under 18 rooms in Discord. Right. right. That's, right. You, you always get these dreads. But this that is a bit. totally new element because it's so immersive and mm -hmm. um, it, it really does draw the lines. There's there's and we're going to get into this. That's kind of the crux of it is that kids in the same room as with adults and very little moderation. So um, I think that a lot of parents when Christmas time came around, um, you know, they're reporting that, you know, tons, millions of parents bought VR headsets for their kids for Christmas, kind of thinking that, oh, look, this is just like Xbox or PlayStation. This is just the next generation of gaming. And this is like the new console and really having no idea what's going on in these games, particularly in the chat games. And, um, you know, there's been definitely several instances of child abuse, harassment, and sexual activity and everything, you name it. So. Now, now there's, there's a lot of, like you'll see a lot of comments, especially when it comes to child abuse or abuse, or, you know, I've been virtually raped, uh, things like that. And I'm, you, you'll see a lot of comments kind of, you know, defending it, you know, turn it off. And yes, I am in an agreement with that when it comes to adults, more adults than children. Uh, this, we know how malleable children are. Uh, we know how they can get coerced, how they can get groomed. Now, this happens already uh, through texting on phone. This happens already through Facebook. It kids are very easy to manipulate in this sort of a way. So it's a lot harder for, for you to just tell them to turn it off. Right. Uh, for adults, I am a little less sympathetic. Um, you're a grown person. If, if something like that comes up to you in a VR chat, just like in a game, when people are calling you names, change the lobby. Go to it, like, right, you can block game. them, you can leave right. the, the game. Um, but what parents are discovering, actually, is that it doesn't come with parental controls, these, um, you know, this Oculus. And there are, there's no real clear way to report issues like harassments or sexual predators or child grooming or anything. And a lot of people are saying that when they do try to complain to whether it's Facebook or, you know, on VR in some way, that they're just going, these, these complaints are going completely unanswered. So, and there's very little or no moderation in these chat forums. So in, in any sort of a metaverse now or in the future, no children should ever be allowed on it or in it. Right, um, unless it's like a single player where they're just doing like, uh, you know, a game that has like a storyline and that kind of thing that's age appropriate or whatever, parents can control that. But when they're entering these, these rooms where there's chat going on, we're going to show and play clips of some really, really disturbing type of stuff that happens in these, these chat rooms. And there's, there's kids everywhere and pedos everywhere. And uh, it's just crazy. But there have been, so there's been countless reports of sexual assault. And I will say, and we were kind of talking about this before recording is, you know, a lot of these people are kind of like snowflakes, you know, um, but there is some legitimacy to a lot of complaints that are happening. Uh, I think that part of the problem is, number one, um, adults can mask their avatar and their voice to appear and sound like a child. And children can mask their look and their sound to sound like an adult. And it makes it really very difficult to know the age of the real person behind that avatar. And the kids are oftentimes just as bad as the adults in the depravity as far as their language and the sexual activity and the bullying. I mean, it's just completely unmoderated. And it's really, a place where people feel like they can have some anonymity, which is emboldening um, not just adults, but kids too, to do things they would just never, ever do 
in the real world without any consequences. So um, I wanted to read this article that came out um, in January uh, 2022. Uh, so uh, dark side of the metaverse exposed why your kids need to stay away from VR chat. Uh, parents who bought their children an Oculus Quest 2 for Christmas could be in for a big surprise as there have been several instances of child grooming within one of the virtual reality headsets, most popular chat room services, VR chat. VR chat is an online virtual world platform where your users get their first taste of the metaverse and use full body avatars to conceal their identity. There have been instances of child abuse, harassment, racism, pornography, pornography on the popular chat room service. One clip shared by a YouTuber, The Dark Maze, shares several instances of a massive problem in VR chat, child exploitation and sexualization. And uh, yeah, what this um, YouTube channel, The Dark Maze, exposed in this short documentary is really, really disturbing. And we should probably play a, a couple of clips of it because it'll give people a feel for what um, VR chat and some of these other chat forums in VR are like. So I'm gonna play, I'm gonna set this one up. This is um, an underage girl in a 12 year old avatar dancing for a supposedly 40 year old man disguised as a cartoon character. So hold on one sec. One of the first experiences I had that really shook me was seeing an underage girl dressed in a 12-year-old's body dancing for a 40-year-old Japanese man. Her friends were all above 18. It was disgusting, to say the least. There were a lot of people in the room that didn't like what was happening, and you heard the one man make a racial slur, and everyone else in the room didn't like it. They just left, and on went this scene. I don't really know what they would have done because the devs in this game don't give you any sort of tools at all to address these issues even slightly. One thing to note was this older Japanese man was in a very unassuming and childlike avatar that looked akin to something like a Pokemon. And I think that is inherently one of the dangers of VR chat is the deceptive nature that our brain plays. When we see something so innocent and cuddly, we just instantly assume that it's harmless. But behind that screen could be a child predator. And there's no way for you to know. It's pretty disturbing when you see that kind of stuff. And it's pretty common, actually, um, to see that kind of stuff in VR chat. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And um, I guess I should have said this sooner, but the videos that we're about to play um, are we're just giving you right now a language and content warning because they're very disturbing. They're going to be talking about pedophilia, uh, completely inappropriate sexual activity, uh, you know, foul language, everything, everything. You're going to hear and see everything. So just giving you guys a, you know, language and content warning here yeah. so before we play the next one. And and we're also definitely going to leave the links to these videos because they're actually really good if you want a more in-depth uh, investigation to this stuff because this guy, the Dark Maze, really went in there. Um, and he must have some sort of psychology degree because he did really well. Uh, with getting information and talking to kids as well um, about their experiences. So definitely check out that these videos after uh, we play them. Yeah, definitely. And um, you set that up perfectly because the next clip I'm going to play, um, the interviewer, the Dark Maze, is speaking with a 14-year-old boy who describes sexual encounters with older men. And he talks about how in the first or in one encounter, he rejected that man and left the world and blocked him. But in another encounter, he describes a sexual encounter with an adult man that had gained his trust 
over time. And in that encounter, they both actually went all the way, you know, reached climax. So I know it's really disturbing, but people, I think, really need to hear what's going on in these these chat forums. It's it's really disturbing. So hold on a sec. Yeah. Did they try to do things to you? Yes. They tried to talk you into into having unironic sexual activity with them, right? Sexual interaction. Mm. Did you do it? Well, one of them, I wasn't really okay with it. So did you re reject him and that was the end of it? Or did they press the issue? It was kind of like... It was kind of like really awkward because they did press it, press it a little bit. At what point did you? I have you just left. Touch. So did you leave? So like, yeah, that's another question too. Is like, what's going on in these situations when that person's touching you or trying to touch you? Do you feel like? Do you feel like it's real? Do you feel it yeah. physically? Yes. So you have like, a, I guess, a psychological response to their actual presence. Yeah. In, yeah. Um, so, that, so what did you do? Did you did you just leave the world and block them? And uh, I guess the main question is, were they over the age of eighteen? Yes, they were, and I did leave the world and block them. But on the other occasion with the other person, I was okay with it, and because I trusted this person. Than than so you so you 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 uh, you went along with you went along with the the sexual activity. Yes, I'm one, I'm one time. Did it end with, um, did it end with, uh, how do I say this? Um, did it end because you uh, lost interest or did it end with, a, I guess, a release? Let's just say that, right? Don't talk to me. Uh, release. Okay, so you actually got sexual gratification from it. What? Yes. Were you aware if the other person did too? Did they get sexual gratification? Yes. Yeah. And they were also the, over 18. It was, uh, yeah, I think 23 or 24. And okay. uh, I have actually a question. Were both of these people over your age? Are you good? No? Yeah, they were. I can't hear you. Did these two people, um... They were definitely aware of it because the first time I met them, that was like... Oh, so you didn't meet like these the people that on that asked. occasion? Yeah, the first thing they asked is... I, and I've, I've known them. Okay. Uh, so, just gotta yell. so, um, <laughs> so, yeah, they knew it ever since they met me. Yeah, that's really dark to hear that. And, yeah, it, it, it keeps going on, um, especially the next time I talk to him. So, uh, yeah, it's, um, they knew his age. So, and he knew of their age. So um, it, it's it's not like even hiding behind an avatar, um, they could claim, you know, that they didn't know. Um, th this kid here is explaining, no, you know, I got to know these people and they knew that I was underage and did it anyway. Oh, they didn't care. No, absolutely not. They, I think they wanted that to be the case. Mm -hmm, because I think, um, and we're going to get into a lot of the comments from people on VR chat. Um, this is really where, a place where um, child predators and just like, you know, creepy people are, are flocking to because they know it's a place where there's, you know, kids on it and um, the parents aren't there, you know, to see everything that's going on in these worlds. Um, so it's a way to befriend them, isolate them, groom them, and do all kinds of, of things with them, you know, earn their trust, and then get them to, to compromise themselves, you know, um, without any kind of parental awareness of what's going on. And, and, and then it goes into a, a deeper and darker aspect, as in uh, what happens if any of these Predators are real savvy with technology, right? Um, they document this. They blackmail these kids. Um, 
Yeah. That's the more darker side of it. They'll bribe them with, um, you know, I'll give you a skin or whatever it is, you know, um, or they will blackmail them. Like I've recorded things and I can, you know what I mean? So I'll show it to your family, your mm -hmm, parents and your mm -hmm. school. Exactly. Exactly. I'm going to play this clip here too. I just wanted to set it up real quick. This is by um, Han Jero, I think is how you pronounce it. <laughs> well, I just, I caught this one. And what's really disturbing is not only the depravity of the main character, so to speak, in this, the creepiest VR chat player ever is what they're titling it. But how everybody's sort of laughing and joking it off. Like at first they're like, whoa, whoa, that's, wow, that's out of line. Like they know that's not okay what this guy's doing. But then they kind of just start laughing about it. And that's what's so disturbing to me is that these forums are also a way of kind of normalizing it in a group setting um, to where other people just watching what's going on um, either feel helpless or feel like, you know, that, that, that what can I do about this or just think it's funny, like something to laugh about when in the real world, this would never be acceptable at all. Mm -hmm. So hold on. I'm just going to play like a couple of minutes of this one real quick. And I, again, have to warn you about the language and the content because it's bad. Whoa, what the fuck is going on? Yo, what's the fuck? Yeah, guys. Yeah. I think I made. How's the furry? What the it's fucking scrumptious, my man. It's fucking scrumptious. Look, uh, take a look at this shit, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whoa, dude. That's good. See, you might look at him and think, you know, maybe he just likes, you know, some furry ass, right? You know, and that's it. Oh, you're wrong. Check this out. Yeah, I want to have sex with children and kill them. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> oh, okay, Albert Fish. <laughs> and you looking good. Oh, oh shit. Sorry. Now, that's a, that's a fucking job. predator right there, dude. Yeah, you guys know the fucking wait, predator wait, wait, from wait. Aliens? That ain't it. That man right there, he's a real fucking predator. God damn. Hey, Jaren, what's up? Hey. Hey, I like this not view. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit. Now this little hormone man right here is about to get into an argument with the uh, the pedo serial killer right there, aka cum smuggler. Okay, that's his name. And that shit was funny as fuck. Oh shit! You're gonna die by age 30, man, by suicide. It's all right. So just fucking put your lips around my dick and shut up, bro. Why don't you take her on a lips and shut up? Hey, it's just out of nowhere, dude. They just started arguing out of nowhere. Man, talk that shit. Yo, talk about talk about each other's mamas. Yo, I'm pretty sure you're not black. Smuggler, you fucking faggot. Yeah, I'm a fucking faggot. That's why I want this faggot to listen to my little fucking faggot. You're fucking fucking weird. Oh, you're really fucking weird. Built different. I mean, in this video, the character, the creepiest VR chat player ever, ever, looks and sounds very much like an adult man, and. Oh, it is. He's, yeah, and he's um, trying to get this very childlike avatar to simulate oral sex on him with everyone watching. And they know it's disturbing, but they're kind of laughing it off, you know? It's pretty messed up. So I thought we should just kind of read the, the comments in uh, VR chats and also in Horizon to get kind of a feel, gauge kind of a feel for, you know, how prevalent is this? And I'm just going to up front say it's prevalent, but it is. It is. Yeah. And, um, but just by gauging from the comments, you'll see that's the case too. Um, 
so let's see here. Oh, here we go. Pedophiles everywhere. Do not, and I repeat, do not let your children on this app. Dirty, foul mouthed people who think it's okay to ask a child into a room and then ask them to take their clothes off. This app needs a massive overhaul. Parental guidance is not enough. I was in the room. So that's just one. Um, let me see here. We'll go back and see if we can see some others. Total bully game and child abuse hate. So it's not just the issue of the sexuality, but there is just a lot of foul language, as you guys heard, you know, and pe kids ganging up on kids, typical stuff, but it's just totally unmoderated. So it says, do not download this game for anyone. My child tried to commit suicide because of the bullying going on in VR chat. It's a total hangout for bullies and a-holes that have nothing better to do than spew hate towards others and especially children. Um, a lot of the complaints are issues with glitching and you know not downloading and stuff, but I'm just reading through to see, um, you uh, know- good. Go up. That was the, the the top one's a good one. My son did. My son wanted this. Uh, yeah, the top one. Okay, my son wanted this, so made sure to give it a test try and check it out before allowing him to play. So glad I did. Didn't take long for someone to come on who was being very inappropriate. She sounded like a child, and I was shocked to hear what was coming out of her mouth. I tried to see if there was a way to report but couldn't find any, so definitely won't be letting my son play this one. Parents, I suggest you double check before trusting these kinds of games. And so there's just tons and tons of these kind of comments in VR chat. Same thing with Horizon. Horizon's another game. It's supposed to be for adults only, but when you read the comments, you see there's absolutely tons and tons of kids in it. So it's just another like social media, you know, sort of chat room um, type of game like VR chat. But like the first two comments here are talking about this issue, more so of just that there are, it's overrun with kids and it's supposed to be a, an adult forum. So I'm just gonna read it um, and read a couple of these. There are racist and inappropriate children and adults in Horizon World. I've been reported for defending myself and when I asked and when I requested for Oculus support to review the video of my interaction, all I was told is to not retaliate and report the person. How can I report someone if I don't know who is being negative towards me? Okay, so that one, um, here's another one. The biggest problem with Horizon's world are the moderators. It's supposed to be an 18 plus game, but it's like 80% children in there. And the mods don't care. I was just on uh, there. Uh, there was a kid, clearly a child on there. And I brought it up to the moderator. Dude, this is an 18 plus game. Why are you allowing this kid on here? And his excuse was he couldn't do anything because they sounded young. So uh, basically there's just uh, very little moderation, lots of complaints about how there's this inner meaning mingling between kids and adults in these games. And regular normal adults who want to have like adult gaming chat, you know, games, uh, they don't want kids in there. And it's not appropriate for, for kids to be in there. So I mean, that's a normal adult perception of things. Right. So, mm. so all of the regular normal adults are like, I'm never playing this stuff again because it's overrun with kids. And the only adults that are left in these games are the creeps, the pedophiles who want to play with the kids. So that it's just like, it's overrun. It's absolutely overrun. And as you can see by many of the comments, and you guys can check these comments out, just have to go on to oculus.com and search for the different apps and games. Um, and look at the chat games, you can read the comments, and it's just overrun, uh, and the moderators are not willing to or able to do anything about it. So, anyways, um, I did want to talk about how, um, 
how Facebook's meta is doing lately. <laughs> I mean, this came out February 4th. I think it was actually February 3rd. Facebook meta lost $230 billion of market value in a single day crash. And what I heard was that this is about 27% of Facebook's total value or uh, something like that. So just a massive, massive loss uh, for Facebook's meta. Uh, um, and, which, and, which, which this doesn't really surprise me. I mean, this is going away from the topic that we we're talking before, but Facebook was never going to be the one that could implement something like this. Um, like I said, it is a new take on an old idea. People have tried. Uh, They've waited for technology. They've tried to push technology. The most successful one today is probably still Second Life um, that you can still VR in. Um, it is quite complicated and restrictive. Um, so and it's not really um, uh, taken off with the newer generation. So you had to have older people in there um, creating stuff, creating worlds, building things, selling things. Uh, it's an interesting medium. It does have its cringe, of course, but Facebook is all cringe now. Uh, this is never going to work. Um, I've seen ads for the metaverse and stuff like that, and it's just kind of silly uh, to me that a company like that could even push something like this. Uh, yeah, so, th so this does not surprise me that Facebook will take a hit. Uh, like you said prior to recording, you know, this is seems like more of social engineering by this cyborg. Look at him, he's, he's a cyborg, right? right. Straight, <laughs> straight up, straight up. Straight up. Right? <laughs> it reminds me of the, the cyborg from Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, right. Zuckerberg is AI, I'm convinced. <laughs> and oh, 100%. <laughs> And Facebook itself was, I think, in part um, used to help make AI um, become stronger, more powerful, and actually humanized more. And so maybe Zuckerberg himself <laughs> has benefited from that. I, he's still very much robotic to me. I don't know. No, 100%. But like to, to create something like this that's going to have a, a long-lasting effect... Uh, a lot of it will have to be open source. Uh, you could not put this into a hands of one person or one corporation uh, because there's a million different bad scenarios of how that could turn out. Well, uh, I mean, when you look at the the two front runners, so it's it's Facebook's Oculus, and then it looks like Microsoft um, as well. So we got. Zuckerberg and Bill Gates wanting to create this dystopian metaverse for us. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? But I'm just going to say it's my opinion that they don't care about the billions and losses. I mean, they are actually selling the equipment, the Oculus equipment at a loss. Everyone sold is sold at a loss. And it's because they want just to, um, to get this this into the market and start um, growing this market because Facebook is dying off. Um, it's become something that's uh, really appeals only now to uh, I would say kind of the middle age and older uh, groups of people. And the kids have really migrated over to things like TikTok. And I think that um, the Facebook metaverse, the Oculus, uh, VR in general, is a way of trying to capture those kids back and uh, get them to grow up in this kind of virtual reality world um, without really a second thought of it, you know? Um, and I do think that they're willing to take a loss uh, in the hundreds of billions, because it's not really about the money. It's actually about maintaining their existence uh, because they understand that Facebook's dying off, but also it's about um, social engineering, mainly about social engineering. And, you know, in VR, it seems to me like the, the aspect of social engineering is really about getting people to detach from their physical bodies and kind of blur those lines 
between what makes us human and groom people, especially children, into this sort of transhumanist movement, because I think that really mm-hmm. is the end game for them. And yeah. they, they see this as, you know, also the when you have um, the ability to have any kind of avatar, any kind of voice, you know, and, you're, and adults are disguising themselves as children, children are disguising themselves as adults. It really does blur those lines. And mm, it becomes creates, a, blended, a blended sort of reality. Mm-hmm, and creates mm. this environment where any kind of sexual depravity, even pedophilia uh, can go can happen Mm -hmm. and um i think that really is part of their social engineering what do you think and this this is the dystopian path that i that i was referring to at the start um like i said a lot of good things can happen uh with this tech A, a lot of fun can be had if you were if you are a conscious person if you're aware of both sides of the coin um I think personally, with tech like this, there needs to be a safety on these devices. Um, Like that switch off every three hours, um, that will keep you grounded on reality. Now, that is more something that we're looking at 10 or 20 years from now when full V, full full dive uh, full dive technology comes out if you've ever seen a game uh, a movie movie or read the book ready player one that is very very close to to full dive tech that is is uh, actually built sustainable metaverse um but that that is where the problem lies i mean look at a person that they hate their life they have a terrible relationship um uh, they're, they're, they're bullied, they're abused, uh, they make hardly any money. So l- let's look at people that are really down, right? They can come home, they can put on this thing on their head and it can take them anywhere. It can make them anyone. Um, and as years go down the line, it will start, you, they'll start adding touch. They'll start adding feel. Um, and all that will serve even more to deep dive you into this world. And that is where the problem comes, because when do you detach from reality? When does that become your reality? And right. that is the danger. 100%. I think that is the long-term danger of this. I mean, there's so much depravity happening on some of these chat forums and VR, but broader scope, I mean, the implications as far as society go Um, not just the pedophilia stuff, but the transhumanism stuff, as well as just um, immersing people in a dream world and where they no longer care about what's happening in reality. And in reality, there's so much happening that people need to be waking up to. And this is just another form of putting people back to sleep, is it not? A hundred percent, even in the worst way. But, but like I said, that there is, and that's why I've always been fascinated with technology. There's a lot of good, fun things that can happen in this. But as we know, there is a lot of broken minds in society, just like you see on Twitter, you know, just like you see on Discord and Facebook and even TikTok to a degree. Um, there is some good content on there. There are some good creators on that. And I think you're going to get the same with this sort of feel, right. you know. But you have to look that. at the platforms, who was creating them, what they're actually being used for. And we know by now that TikTok, it was created by the Chinese. It's used to data scrape all of their users' information to use for nefarious purposes. And that's why under the Trump administration, he was trying to ban TikTok and other countries did as well. Um, they were using it as a spying tool and a data scraping tool. Uh, Facebook as well. I mean, the origin of Facebook um, has ties to the intelligence community. We know by now that, for one thing, um, LifeLog was created, you know, by the CIA, NQTEL, DARPA. And then the day that I, that um, LifeLog shut down, Facebook starts up. And that's not a coincidence. In fact, the, um, the makers of it sort of... Um, kind of nodded to that and said, look, yeah, um, this is kind of a way of getting what we want of social engineering, 
of um, data scraping, of uh, spying, without the um, knowledge or without the heat coming down on us, right? Because it's supposedly this private corporation run by Zuckerberg, but really behind the scenes, if you dig into Facebook and its origins, you know it was all kind of by design by the intelligence communities to do all of those things from um, spying to data scraping to social engineering to really kind of mind controlling and driving um, you know, the public's perception on things. And um, definitely with the way that they have, and Twitter as well, all of these social media platforms have um, censored and uh, really skewed the, um, the narrative in one direction. We, we know this to be true in our own personal interactions, don't we? Mm. Yeah. So then when you look at kind of the next phase, oh, what could possibly go wrong if Facebook is going to be <laughs> in charge of the metaverse? What could <laughs> possibly go wrong, right? Mm. Um, yeah, l l look, metaverse is not a serious contender, uh, not for anyone, but it does pave the way and it does show you what other companies, what other things are going to try and how it's going to um, uh, try to push this new thing and it is something that is going to happen unfortunately it is going to happen it is how it happens and how it's rolled out how it's monitored and who is behind it right right and i don't even think that the metaverse and oculus are the final stage of their plan um you know even elon musk has talked about what does he think about the uh, metaverse and he admits that look the headsets are awkward um you know, you've got the screen right in front of your eyes. Um, he doesn't see it as sort of a lasting trend, but he admitted that his Neuralink brain chip will be able to do the same sort of thing with total immersion into virtual world. Mm -hmm. And I do think that that is the end game. I think that I this is, mm -hmm, I think that this is actually the stepping stone to their end game to sort of groom the public and especially the youth um, in this world uh, to where they, you know, accept it as reality and normality and will be fully willing and able to take a brain chip one day just so they can get that next upgrade, you know, and have the, yep. the, the, the next best games and, you and know, all of that. Parents will be buying it for kids for Christmas, just like right. they, they've, they've done with this. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely just wanted to give that warning out to, particularly to parents. I mean, there's a ton of things that you could branches that you could talk, you know, ways you could branch off and talk about this topic. Um, but uh, I just found particularly the stuff that's going on with tons of kids in these very adult sort of chat rooms and having the most uh, depraved, sick kind of interactions and parents not knowing about it. It's definitely a wake up call to a lot of parents because I don't think that they really understand what's going on there oh no they don't they're, they're very uh, oblivious to it it seems like a lot anyway yeah yeah so something that we're gonna have to just kind of like i don't know keep an eye on and keep keep talking about uh so that uh the public becomes more aware of where this is going and who's behind it and why mm-hmm 100%. And definitely go check out those two videos that we linked, especially the Dark Maze one. Uh, he's got a great channel and he's, he's, he's doing a really a lot of good work investigating this and, and bringing us to the forefront of it. Absolutely. So we'll leave some links in the description. Check those out. Thanks, guys, for watching us today on Hive Mind with the speaker and myself, The Sharp Edge. Please be sure to share this podcast. We are on BitChute, YouTube, Foxhole, and Pilled. And we'll see you back next time right here on Hive Mind.